A lot of clients have been asking me why the market and shares have been going up after COVID crash in March, even though economy in all countries is not really in good shape at all and it's likely to be in recession. Is the stock market recovery going to continue or is it likely we'll experience another shock? So in today's video, I will try to answer those questions for you so you can feel more comfortable making your investment decisions for your superannuation or your pension if you're retired or any other investments that you might be holding. For the best investments and retirement tips and advice, subscribe to my channel, hit that little bell to be notified of my next video. My name is Catherine from About Retirement. I am Certified Financial Planner and my goal is to help you create financial security and prosperity for your perfect retirement. Well, I did my market uh, review three months ago, so I thought it's time to do another one right now. So let's jump into it. So what happened since March 2020 when the market hit rock bottom, super funds and pension funds have dropped in value quite dramatically. While well, US market dropped by 34% and now recovered 52% and is already above pre-March heights. Europe dropped by 38% but also recovered by 37% and is still around 15% below the peak before March drops. And Australia dropped by around 37% and recovered by 35% with another 15% to go to reach pre-COVID high. Most people see the rebound as strange, illogical and irrational. After all, the economy around the world is still crippled by COVID epidemic. Is that how you feel? Please let me know in the comments below the video. Okay, so let's discuss market negatives and positives and what's the outcome. Let's have a look at negatives first. Well, coronavirus is not over yet. It's not under control, especially in failed world countries. And many developed countries experience the second wave, just like Australia or Victoria, which can force further lockdowns and impact on economy and delay recovery. Coronavirus created a big hit to economic activity and profits, with US earnings falling by 32% in comparison to previous financial year, and in Australia the fall is expected to be around 22%, the biggest fall since 1990 recession and with many companies cutting down on dividends, 56% of companies did just that. Rising unemployment across the world, many companies might decide to cut down on costs, either keeping their staff still working from home or reduce number of employees altogether. There is very slow recovery for some industries, such as travel. We've noticed share stagnating for the last couple of months. Uh, but historically, we have to remember, historically, August and September tend to be the weakest months for share performance. And then we have U.S election that can potentially increase market volatility because of uncertainty of the outcome. So yes, there is a little bit of bad news. However, there is more of the good news ahead of us. So let's review good news now. I mentioned the second wave in developed countries. However, the good news is that it is less severe, better dealt with, more testing, better protection, hence most countries avoided the full lockdown, unlike Victoria in Australia, where I live. There is a recorded decline in new cases in US and many other countries. There is an increase in spending activities and credit card activities. So we can see lots and lots of transactions happening online. Internet business is really booming now. There is some progress in vaccine and treatment of Corona with many human trials in progress. The fast introduction of fiscal policies and government assistance really helped. Uh, we have low interest environment. Those are all positives 
for employment and reopening of business activities. US dollar has been falling in price and we've noticed rising commodity prices. Those are all signs of global recovery. And of course, very low interest rates and bond yields have increased attractiveness of shares despite lower earnings and dividends because cash and bond alternatives is even less attractive. So here you have it, negatives and positives. So what's the verdict? Based on the data and updates I received from different fund managers and economies, the belief is that although there is some bad news still in the world, and most certainly the COVID problem has not been fully resolved, there is actually more good news on the horizon. We could experience again a short-term share pullback due to lack of certainty around the coronavirus, US election and unresolved tension between US and China. But the expectation is that share returns and performance should be positive for the period of 12 months. Australian market has underperformed US equity market and it only makes sense to keep investing into Aussie shares that is relatively cheaper to US market. US market performance has been incredibly led by IT and health sector, with many others such as financials or materials hit hard by corona outbreak. So to sum up, news are not as bad for the market as one might think. You need to be selective and cautious. However, considering that Aussie market underperformed the US market and really there is no alternative in cash bond related investments, the general uh, feeling is that Aussie market might be a good place for your investing going forward. Obviously, if you want to invest into growth assets with some income. And don't forget those franking credits that can improve your overall return, especially if you have your savings in superannuation or a pension fund, or even if it is directly on your name and you are on low marginal tax rate, which is the case for most retirees. To help you become a better investor, I've written a short book, 12 Principles of Investing, on how to avoid mistakes and how to get even more benefit out of your investing. Download the guide at the link in the description below the video. Keep in mind that this video is of general nature only to provide you with market update. If you want to discuss any investments or your retirement needs, taking into consideration your personal situation, please contact me directly. I will leave details uh, in the description below the video. I hope this video will help you determine what to expect from the market going forward. If so, please like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell so you are notified of my next video. Check out this series of videos specifically prepared for women and how to be better with money and investing. And if you have retired, you will find this video of interest, Income for Life, where you can find suggestions how to make your investments and your pension last longer. I will talk to you next time.